Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. First thing I'd like to talk about, a question came up about losing your energetic coherence whenever you're in like full extension. And so the, uh, uh, I guess I want to emphasize that even when you're at full extension, you don't want to fully extend. You want to have some, um, some reserve there. So, so in other words, let's say you're, you're at, at the beginning, you're, you're going up like this, right? And you're, you're reaching out like that. You know, if you're uh, reaching out, your arms are, are, are locked, you're, you're, you're kind of off balance, then you are going to lose your, your connection. So what we want to do is as we're coming up, is you know, feel the elbows, the wrists, you're coming, and everything is coming from central equilibrium. You don't lose that. So when you extend out, it's not blocked and it's not up real high. It's you know, right about kind of shoulder height. You're reaching out there. You're feeling the, the pull between the shoulder blades as you connect the, uh, the arms, but the, you want to maintain that central equilibrium. So any reach is coming out from that. And so you're, you're never breaking that, that connection. Same thing, like say you're, you're doing like, you know, a move you know, from the, uh, you know, like a, a, a cloud hands where you're here. This is, it's still central equilibrium. If you find yourself reaching like that, you are interrupting your structure and consequently you're going to lose some of that connection and you gotta reestablish it. So just wanna monitor that like, oh, okay, coming across here and I'm reaching, so there's still central equilibrium. Body is centered, I'm extending out from there. And also my elbows are, are dropped. My arms are, there, there's a bow shape in the, in the arms. So that I don't have that, I'm not locking out like that, because that will interrupt your chi flow. So that's that's an important consideration. Another thing that came up is um, last week we did a really cool meditation, and uh, there was a whole bunch of yang chi. So yang is the expansive chi, right? So we're we're playing with wood energy and we're filling up postures with, with wood chi and kind of cranking up the dial to 11. Just sort of see what, you know, what the, uh, your body mind can handle. Because it was a meditation. We're in a fairly safe and controlled environment. So we could actually take it a little bit farther than we ordinarily would. And um, so, you know, Keith mentioned that he got really loopy. He was like, oh, and, and, and had to sign off early because it was just too much. And part of the, the, the gig here is upgrading your, uh, your wiring so that you can handle more and more key. And we do that, part of the way we do that is by stressing the system, that is taking it a little bit farther than it's comfortable, where you start to say, oh, I can't handle all this energy, and you close down for a moment, and that's fine, particularly if you're in a controlled environment, and you're able to like say, okay, it's safe, I can do that here, and then you get to explore that. It's very much like you know, going to the gym, and you're, you're doing that extra set of reps so that your muscles are tired, they're exhausted, so that Oh yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I had a good workout. You know, you run that extra mile so that you feel like you had that workout. And it's the same thing with your chi, your ability, your capacity to handle that chi flow. Because remember, we're playing we're with the big chi. When we engage central equilibrium, we're plugging into the big chi, and consequently, it gets it gets big and 
the amount that you can tolerate is really the determining factor of how much you get to run through your through your body mind. And your tolerance is a lot of times directly proportional to how well you can circulate it through the system via the, your nervous system, via your connective tissue system, via your blood vessels. That energy gets circulated around, energizes the cells, everybody's happy, and then it's discharged. And so we let go of that energy. So learning how to take in bigger amounts and then letting it go and bigger and bigger, and you keep getting more and more. Your, your tolerance for big G increases. And you know the, the basic model for Chinese medicine is get lots of chi and circulate it well. And that's kind of the formula for happy and healthy and long life. So our ability to tolerate more energy, more of the big chi, the chi of heaven and earth and nature chi, uh, allows us to utilize that in a way that we would have no concept of if we are, we're cut off from that connection. And so long story short, it takes practice, it takes kung fu, it takes doing it again and again and again. And learning to tolerate a little bit more each time so that you're, ah, okay, I can, I can handle this, I can handle a little more, I can handle a little more. And I try to be responsible in, in guiding you through these things so that, that nobody gets a toxic dose. You know, you may, may have to sit down, you may have to take the night off, but you know, that's, that's okay. But the, um, we do want to take it a little bit farther each time. And of course you are uh, responsible for your own, your own awareness of what you're able to, to handle, what you feel comfortable handling and you feel safe doing because uh, nobody can do it but you. So each of these things are opportunities for you to play with and you get to go and say, okay, that's enough for now. And you go and you sit down and whatever, and lie down on the floor and just kind of, uh, you know, feel into it and allow that to circulate. And, that, and you, when you do that, you grow, you get bigger and you're able to tolerate more. So, uh, well, I did have an extra tablespoon or two more than I probably had in the past last week. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. <laughs> good. Uh, Okay, any questions or thoughts before we go on to the next next topic? Anybody all good? Okay. All right, cool. So let's uh let's talk about um the ward off or not the ward off, the um, rollback posture. We've kind of played around a bit with the with the ward off posture. So Going back to ward off posture, we we're talking about what animates it is Pong Jin. And Pong Jin is generally speaking an up and out kind of quality. It's a very, it goes from yin to yang. So there's an expansion. It's a, an expanding quality in, in, your, in your energy. And so the next stop on the train is Lu energy or that's more of a down and in kind of entry. This is kind of a very, very general way of talking about it, a way we can relate to it. Although in, in practice, you can access Pong Jin in any shape, any direction. Can't think of Lu. But the, the primary thing about Lu is going from Yang to Yin. And here again, Yang is expansion. In the simplest term, Yang is expansion. Yin is contract. And, and that is a way of talking about the direction that things are moving. So even though, let's say in the case of, of Pong Jin is, is a going from yin to yang, it doesn't mean there's no yin in the posture just because it's going to yin. There is, there's a, there's a 
a, an interaction between yin and yang, which is what allows it to have a chi flow. And these, it's where you're creating poles in opposition. And if everything's going in one direction, then there are no poles in opposition. You may have some momentum, but you don't have you don't have internal power. So the capacity to hold those poles in opposition is what is what determines its the internal power on it. So with a rollback or lu jin, it's going from yang to yin, but in that there's also a yang expansion. So there's so you need that in order for for the for to manifest the internal energy. So the way rollback is usually taught us in our beginning classes is you know that it it's done as a very mechanical thing. You you know let's say you know do this kind of thing or you're just rolling your your arms are moving across and down and and circling around and the there's a, a tendency to move back in. It's generally taught as a as a a dance move. You know, it's a it's a way of 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 moving and you sort of get get an, a general idea of that. And it's an introduction to what's to come. Unfortunately, many people never get past that stage. They still see it as a mechanical thing. And I know it's, for me, it was a big awakening whenever I got into push hands competitions and realized that nobody was using rollback because it didn't work. Not the way that we knew it, not the way that we were doing it at that time. And, uh, and particularly for me, it's like, okay, as a mechanical thing, there just no, there there was no way to actually effectively handle that. Maybe if you're dealing with you know like a, a four year old or something like that, you can kind of guide them along, and that's that's fine. If there's a substantially different level of physicality between you and the person you're rolling back, but for anybody who's competent, it you know it there's nothing going on there. And so usually the way people interpret it is like, oh, I'm just going to disappear. I'm just going to get out of the way. So someone's coming in, and it's sort of like you know the the old psych, like you reach out your hand, like they go, ah, like that, you know, and and you psych someone out. It's sort of like you're you're yeah, push on this, ah, you know, and you're uh, letting them fall into the emptiness, and and that's a, that's a fun move, but it's something that people catch on to fairly quickly. So it, it's not a um, it doesn't surprise you very often. If it does, then you're Hanging around with the wrong crowd, but uh, the uh, you want to uh, so that's also like a really uh, low level way of interpreting the energy, and perhaps the highest expression of it um, that I've been personally encountered was with um, uh, Wei Sun Liao. I've mentioned it before in these talks, but that uh, and I mentioned him also in the uh, and. And, and Western Gate, and and that is, he said, "Oh, would you like to see rollback?" And I, I'm expecting, like, okay, no, that kind of thing. And he just put his fingers lightly on my on my arm like this, and boom, I'm on the ground. And it was the the sense was as if a trap door had opened, and I was being sucked down to the floor, and like, oh. Why I, I never considered that, because the insubstantiality of it was very profound. It was like, oh, okay, this is this is very different than the way I had considered, because I was coming from a mechanical model at that time. And this was thirty years ago or something, but um, um, it stuck with me, and that memory is is still very alive for me because it is. You know, it's a marker of like, okay, that is, I'm not going to say the right way to do it. I'm going to say it's the most insubstantial way that I have encountered to deal with, with the energy. That is, it just, it had a sucking effect that, you know, 
your, uh, uh, it was quite irresistible. But in between that, you have a lot of other levels of substantial and insubstantial that I think we need to play with. So the learning to be able to um, I think personally, and it's something that I've been encountering a lot of my reading lately, is they, you, you really have to go through the, the denser substantial realm to get to that level of insubstantiality. So that is, you have to learn how to connect up and so that you can, before you can learn to, to move 100 pounds with, with four ounces, you have to learn how to you move 100 pounds with 100 ounces or 100 pounds, 100 pounds with 100 pounds. You have to learn how to do that and then 50 and then 25 and then 10. And then you can kind of take it down, down, down. And then you can, you can expand your, your, the amount you're able to leverage even more. But it comes first by learning how to actually handle a big load. And that means that your structure, you have to build up your structure so that you can tolerate more force without muscular tension because the muscular tension actually gets in your way. So the, you know, the way of describing, you know, the way we are initially introduced to it, it's a very mechanical you know, posture where we're, we're kind of moving in a certain way and there is no chin there. It's, it's it, and even very little lead. And then whenever you try to make something happen with that, with your muscles, you find out that it's, it's extremely weak. So there's some postures, let's say push or press that you can fake it using your muscles. You can fake it and a lot of people do. And you can get, you can, if you're strong enough, you can skate by for quite a while with, with that. Things like ward off and rollback, not so much. Like this, if you try to use your muscles to, to, to do that, it's really easy to collapse that, that, that structure because the muscles are not there to support it. And same thing with rollback. The musculature is not sufficient to to support it at a mechanical level. You need gin. And that means going back to our old friend, the three pillars, establishing your contact with the, with the big chi, getting your energetic co coherence involved and to unkink the hose so you're not blocking with mechanical with muscular contraction you're not blocking your uh, your energy that way so uh, let's uh, let's stand up and we'll go through a uh, we'll go through a few of those things and and kind of play with that And let's establish our three pillars. They uh, they'll feel the balls of your feet. We're opening up the energy gate to the bubbling spring. Opening up the earth chi, getting the balls of the feet, feel the toes. These are relaxed. Feel your body sinking down. You know, the idea for sun, the image that sometimes you'll, you'll hear about is that you take a bag of rice, like a hundred pound bag of rice, and you take a knife and 
at the base of it and the rice spills out onto the floor. And that's the way you want to feel. You want to feel your rice is spilling out of the bag and it's spreading out. Your, your base is getting very dense. You want to feel the crown of the head. Reach up to the heavens with that and open the bai hui. The bai hui is um, one interpretation I heard of it that I, I like is that the, the mud pill is the technical or the literal translation and it's a metaphor for the pineal gland. So it's accessible. You're, there's a, um, a yin and a yang uh, by hui and to the to the um, the third eye six or the uh, upper dantian as well as the crown of the head so those two are the poles in opposition the crown of the head is the yang pole the the uh, upper dantian is the yin pole so you're reaching with the crown of your head and you're opening up the yang chi of the heaven. So you're, you're sinking, feeling that, that bag of rice spilling out on the floor. At the same time, you're reaching up with the crown, tuning into that. You relax your lower back and feel the toxic with that dropping. Feel the way Lu at the at the ganglion impar at the at, on the uh, on the coccyx on the tailbone, the nerve plexus there. And that's where the energy center is. You're holding that in opposition with the crown. So you're opening up the spine as you do that, tucking the chin and open up the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. I hope you don't mind if I just gently, slowly talk you through all this because it's important. Even though I know you're getting it, getting access to this third three pillars much faster, good to go back over it and do it as a meditation. Just you know, refamiliarize yourself each time with the, with the different components. So we established the central equilibrium. Now you want to point your index fingers, feel your hands, feel the chi there. You could be feeling some tingling, pulsing, heat, purple fullness. This is creating a state of wholeness throughout the whole body mind. It is coherence. It's activating the connective tissues just by pointing and reaching, you're signaling the connective tissue system, reminding yourself of how everything is in your whole body mind is, is united. The living matrix of your connective tissue system. And reach with your elbows, your arms are slightly rounded. Shoulders are very relaxed. Ball the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. You're releasing the claw without pushing your butt out to the side. You just rotate it. Now you feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right, releasing the claw on the right. So getting sung claw back to center. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me in profile. 
So I'm going to put your right foot forward. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. So we're establishing our center of equilibrium now. Here. But the weight, 70-30. Releasing the claw. And as you release the claw, each time you do, you want to coordinate to release the claw. We're sinking into the right leg. So we're going to release here at the, the inguinal crease where the thigh meets the torso. And you reach with the elbows slightly. So as you're spiraling down, there's just a gentle reaching with the elbows. So you want to get that, it becomes like automatic. But still, you're feeling it. You're still very aware of doing it, but it's not something you have to remember to do. It's just something you do. So spiral down, you reach with the elbows. Good. So you feel the, the ball, the right foot's at the right knee. You feel that right elbow. Reach with the wrist, and we're going into a ward off posture here. And turn. So we've gone from yin to yang. There's an expansion here. So now we're going to feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Actually, we're going to do it in the back, but we're going to keep this real simple. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the right. And as you do that, turn and open. When I say open, all you're doing is your elbow is set and you're just reaching out that arm as your body turns. I'll do it facing you so you can see what's, what's here. So I'm here like this, I'm gonna feel the ball set the knee. And as I turn, as I, uh, I'm going to, as I turn my, my relationship of my elbow to my body remains the same. What changes is the arm reaches out a little bit like that. So we're just going like this very gently, very, oh, we're opening up like that. Okay. And I was saying left knee, so we're doing it left knee. So let's so all the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. So we're doing all this back weighted. And the left hand just rotates like this. We're going like this, we're opening. So that's an expansion. Even though the quad is yin, the arms are reaching out. Because we're going from yang to yin. So left ball, set the left knee, and we're gonna turn now. And as we turn, you want to reach with the elbows again and turn the body and continue to extend outward as you do that. You're maintaining a constant distance between the arms as you get down. You're reaching out the whole time. Elbows are reaching, fingers are reaching, wrists are reaching. So even though the direction of the energy Regarding your body is down and in, right? Boom, like this. There is this yang component. So there's, there's still this quality of reaching, even though it's yin. So the mistake that I see that people do when they're you know, trying to make sense of this posture, which doesn't work at a mechanical level, only works at an energetic level is they're they're collapsing the structure. They're coming in, they're they're bringing the arms in, they're folding, and the arms are getting limp as they're as they're coming down, and it, and are mystified that it doesn't work. And that's because it's the, a key. Even at the highest levels, there is this quality of reaching. So as you're coming in like this, oh, you're, you're reaching and you're feeling that connection. This is what activates the connective tissue system and activates the connection throughout the whole, the whole body mind. So we're back here at, at, at Ward Up. We're going to go back into the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and open. 
So you're reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists, reaching with the fingers. Remember we talked about right at the beginning there about how you don't want to overextend. So I'm not like, I don't want to go like that. I want to maintain my center of equilibrium. So even though I'm reaching out and, and this has a lot of gin with it, it's all coming from that central pillar. So we're ah oh, we're we're it's plugged into the earth. So there's so there is an extension through the fingers. So here we are. So we're going okay. So we're in the uh, in the uh, the right foot. We're going to feel the ball. The left foot set the left knee spiral down to the right and open. So you're when I say open, you're feeling your elbows. You're feeling your wrists. You're reaching with that. You're reaching with the fingers. You're maintaining your central equilibrium as you do this. Your qua is sung. You're rooted, you're connected. Your fingers are reaching, feeling that energetic coherence. And now as you turn, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and you begin to initiate with the qua, you feel those elbows, you feel the wrists, why? Because this is what ties it all together. You feel the fingers. So as you're turning very slowly, you're feeling a connection that your the turn of the body is guided by your contact through your left foot. So it is guiding your 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 energy is guiding your the, the turn of the body. It's making that connection. So you're feeling the floor with your fingers. You're feeling the earth with your fingers. Why? Because there's a continuity of energy all the way through the system. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. You want to reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists, and Turn. And we're not going to do a, a press. We're going to go right back into a ward off. And now we're going to feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee spiral down to the right and open. Feel the elbows, feel the wrists. Reach with the crown. Feel yourself sinking. Feel the, your claw very soon. And as you turn, feel your elbows, feel your wrists, and turn. Feel a con continuity all the way through that posture. So as you're here, you really want to feel it through the shoulder blades. You want to feel it through the shoulders. Reach with your elbows. So. You want that the hands to be really pulsing right now. You want to feel the juice really just jamming along. So now we're going to go back into a press again. So feel the ball, set the knee, reach to the elbows, spiral down to the left, and then turn and ward off right. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Feel the elbows, feel the wrists, feel the fingers. The ball, set the left knee, feel the quad, elbows, wrists, fingers, turn. Yeah. Now we're gonna go a little smaller and quieter. So this is this is big and this is, you know, I was saying before about you wanna start, you wanna really get it so that a hundred pounds moves a hundred pounds. Well, this will this will do the trick on that. But now we wanna make that leap even smaller. We're gonna go feel the ball, the right foot, set the right knee, reach with the elbows, wrists, and uh, 
bring the size of the movements down by half. So we're back. You're feeling the same energy in a, in a smaller container. And the left ball set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Half as big. Still reaching. Still feeling the connection between the shoulder blades. Feel the elbows, feel the wrists, and turn. Much smaller, quieter. And the right ball, set the right knee, spiral down, elbows, wrists, very much smaller. Left ball, set the left knee, roll down to the right. Half of that. And turn. Bringing the same energy and the same power, but the movements have gotten very small. I'm gonna go even smaller now, half of that. Feel your elbows, feel your wrists. Feel the energy between your hands. Feel the chi ball there. Left foot. All right. Turn. Elbows, wrists. Still doing the same stuff. We're just keep making the package a little smaller. Smaller still. Left ball, set the left knee. All right. Left. Smaller still. Right ball, set the right knee. Elbows, wrists. Left ball, left knee, all right. Right ball, right knee. Now don't move, but go through that same pattern. Feel it. Don't just think about it, feel it. Feel yourself spiraling down to the right, opening, left ball, left knee, turn to the left. Back to the right, feel that. Open. And roll back. Now feel all those different movements at once without differentiating them. Feel the infinite potentiality within all those movements without expressing them. Come down, step back. Just feel the chi in your body right now. Feel the, the flow, feel the 
feel the blood circulating. Feel the movement in stillness. Ball the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Body, the mind, let it all go. You're not attaching to anything, you're just feeling into it. Feeling the emptiness. You're occupying that state of insubstantiality beyond mind, beyond energy. You're feeling it to your being. Please have a seat. Did you do the breath and clear? <laughs> How'd that go? We got down to moving without moving. I didn't want to stop. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty addictive. <laughs> Richard. Um, tonight I felt, um, I felt um, falling into the rollback when in the past I've sometimes felt as though it was pulling me. Mm. But tonight I felt as though when we went from press to roll back, that the, the substance just rolled over and fell into the hole. <laughs> it was very- It was a beautiful it, image. <laughs> it was very, very, very uh, interesting. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I like that description. That's great. Ben. So I had a little. Uh oh, you froze. Uh oh. <laughs> That's a great pose, though. Uh oh. Come back. Um, okay, uh, everybody else will uh, maybe they'll 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 uh, connect up again. Scott. I um, really got another level of the um, connection with. You know, from the shoulders, and you know, felt like you know the whole. I really felt like a really strong circle, a real strong hole. So. Great, terrific. Probably not that hard. As you said, you know, of all the forms you've taught over the years, this one seemed to be the one that most kicks in when there's a partner. Like it's just night and day. It's like you almost don't get it until you have some resistance doing it to realize how, and you were alluding to that, how ineffective everybody's rollback seemed to be in, in push hands. And so it's like, I don't know why they didn't train to that point. Like, well, then pretend somebody's there and keep, keep doing it because it really kicks it up a whole nother level, it seems. And I don't know whether it makes the extension a little more sincere or, or what exactly is going on there, but even imagining somebody else there seems to just fill out the form in, in a way that seems optimal. Hmm. I, I know that, that that certainly is, is, is a way of training and it, it's one that is uh, people use. I don't personally do that, but uh, I, I however have, you know, thousands of hours. You did with of, us, 
thousands of dollars of actually doing it. So for me, it's it's a it's a fell sense. So I I guess if you have no partner, use your imagination. It's, right. it's, sort of, it's, it's a substitute for the absence of actually someone to yank on while you're while you're doing this thing. Uh, but it's a uh, you know I said before, like you know. 100 pounds of force to move 100 pounds, you know, you got to get comfortable with that before you can right. use four ounces to use 100 pounds. And, right. uh, and so, uh, so what you're saying is, yes, if you don't have a partner, use your imagination, but by all means, get a partner so you can actually feel what works and what doesn't. Because, right. but I think with the, the underlying idea of what you're getting at is you really don't know until you, until you actually do right. it. And, no, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Until you actually do it, you, you don't really get get the uh, the the uh, the application of it. But you can. I think everybody here felt something. If you're feeling you're feeling the chi, if not if not uh, having as a dependable chin yet. But that's part of the training. It's getting that getting some resistance there, so you can actually notice where you cheat. Whenever resistance happens, Richard, yes, maybe that that reach, okay. that reach is repeated. You know, it's that, and and when somebody's there, you you can't cheat that, and just come right. back into yourself. You have to keep reaching out, if you will, right, in, in that contact. You know? Right, and also too the the tendency to when you're coming back like this, you if you if you're not if you haven't trained it. Your tendency is to to pull in. You're, yeah, you're right. Pulling down rather right. than reaching out. So it's right. a, it's the opposite of, of the what makes it actually work. Right. It, 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 I think you know underlying what you're saying there is that the the active ingredient in this thing is the reaching. Right. It is the right. extension, and without that, you're going to be faking. You're going to be trying to you're going to try to, to to muscle someone in, and, and it it's not very effective at all. Right. Richard. Um, earlier, it, it, it sort of struck me that in order to push 100 pounds, you have to exert 100 pounds or more of push. What we're doing is learning how to move something with less than the hundred pounds of force. Yeah. And we're progressively learning how to move it with less and less and less push force. Exactly. Uh, it's a very interesting way to try to train. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's built into the traditional systems. It just that, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of us try to cheat. We try to go to the woo woo first and, uh, Hey, if I just go into a deep meditative state, then everything's going to be you know, at my at my fingertips. And no, you you really got to you got to go through the you got to go through the steps to make to make that happen. Uh, I'm frozen. That uh, I don't know what's going on. Everybody's frozen. Okay. Stan, you got something? Yes, I I noticed something over uh, when I'm doing it following directions and when I actually uh, feel the elbows then the wrists then the fingers it's a hell of a lot different than uh, I I know what I'm doing uh, I'm supposed to be doing I'm doing it but without that a little extra emphasis it doesn't seem to have the uh, power there or the uh, energy uh, I, I agree and that uh... And I think that's what takes us from from chi to jin. Mm. Okay, so we can we can uh, we can feel the energy, but until you make those internal connections, you have no way. It, it, there's no way of getting that the 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 chi to to actually animate into something which is actually workable. Mm. Yes, yeah. thank you. You bet. Hey, I didn't pass out there. I just lost my internet and I was trying to get on with my phone and then it came back on. Okay. Got overhead line, Santa Ana winds, Southern California. This eight it's, happening, it's happening here too, Keith. 
it's happening here too, Keith. We're we're experiencing some kind of uh, interruption, so people are freezing up, and so it's just, Putin. This, this too shall pass. This too it's shall Putin. pass. <laughs> it's Russia. Hey, Rick. What's up, Rick? I just wanted to explain that it's not Putin. It's this. It's a solar storm. Ah. It's sunspots and other things very potent today. So ah, okay, they, thank you. They expected it some. Mm. Go, go back to what you were doing. Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Especially as we kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, there was no difference between my push, between my ward off and my rollback energetically you know i was it was the same <laughs> you know i mean I knew that there was this expansion out here but there was also this I, there was no collapse there was still that expansion you know being in the elbows being in the wrists, being in the hands um which uh i didn't even try to analyze or think about i just experienced it and i thought that was rather cool that I could feel as much power in a push as I could in a rollback and absolutely no muscular tension. And I was full, I was full, I was full, I was full. I was full. Were you full? <laughs> a little bit full. Okay, <laughs> Sharon. Um, I, I hear the importance of working with a partner, but this was particularly effective for me um, because when I work in a partner, I, I lose myself a lot. Um, and this allow, allowed, doing it solo allowed me to develop in a different way. And um, I particularly mm. liked um, the fingers feeling the floor. That really shifted things for me. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Great. Thank you. Scott. It seems to me the difference between um, the way that doesn't work and the way that does work is that when you, the, the way that doesn't work is kind of a straight line. And when you're doing it right, it's more of an arc. At least that's the feeling I got. Okay. Okay. For me, what, what makes it is that they, the, the dots aren't connected in the way that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. that, that muscular contraction gets in the way and interrupts the chi flow. And so it, uh, it doesn't work that way. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at that, that, that arc versus straight line thing because it's uh, that, that might be something. So I'll take a look at that. Mm. Dennis. Yeah, I noticed as the form got smaller, it took less muscle to hold my arms up so that I got more into the into the chi as it got smaller. So it got I got out of the muscle as it got smaller. Good. Good. And so I think you know practicing it that way so that you know you do have it big and you smaller, 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 you you get a chance to to acquaint yourself with your own limitations. Yeah, and you feel the transition. Right. And, and be also your own limitations. You say, oh, if I'm reaching out like this, my arms get heavy, my arms get tired. Like, okay, so that's, that's, that's something to know. So that as I'm practicing, maybe I spend a little bit more time in the expanded posture. Yeah. And, and, and just so that I familiarize myself with my limitations there and go a little bit farther. So build up the system so that I have that capacity to move 100 pounds with a hundred pounds of force. So yeah, I, yeah, that you can, you can generate that, you have that capacity as well. But so who knows, sometimes you might need to move a refrigerator, you know. <laughs> you, you, need that, you need that juice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard stories about, oh, this great master, you know, he couldn't pick up a bowling ball. He was so, so weak, but he could send people flying across the floor. And I want to do both. Yeah, I want to be able to ah, yes. all and send people across. You know, so I would say, you know, you know and that, I think it's it's really important to be able to to move a hundred pounds with a hundred pounds of force, and and be able to also move with four ounces. 
And so, and if you, and all stops in between, because you don't know what, what the challenge that you're going to be meeting is until you meet it. And so having all those tools at your disposal that allows you to, to use the one that is appropriate for the situation because you are in control of your, your arsenal. You're, you, got, you know all the arrows in your quiver. You got <laughs> names for them. Yeah, and uh, so you, uh, you can, uh, you're acquainted. Okay, I get, getting a signal here that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's time to quit. So uh, thank you all so much, it's been great. Love you all. Thank, thank you, Maria. Maria. Thank, thank you, Maria. Maria. Love you, Maria. Love you guys. Thank, thank you, Maria. Maria. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> thank you, Sunspot. <laughs>